Let's look at a disorder example in OLEX2 today. And the disorder we want to look at is this quite frequent, quite common CF3 disorder, rotational disorder. So here's uh, what we're looking for. It's been modeled in this, this example here. And in order to start here, this is one of Charlotte Stern's example. In order to start here, we will solve the structure first. So we go over to work and solution and I'm going to choose to use shell XT to solve the structure which gives you a nice quick solution. It takes a little bit of time. In the meantime we can look at the data. We've got a standard resolution data set fairly strong but the R int is quite high so the data aren't very self-consistent but it's probably something we can live with. So final R factor was five and a half percent. Let's keep this in mind. Shell XT is uh, slaving away, giving you um, output about the potential space groups. And uh, my recommendation is to just go with whatever it says initially. And it does an atom type assignment. And it, there we go. And it looks fairly good. So the structure looks like it's clearly solved and the atom types have been assigned rather well. So what we need to do is refine this structure. And just to make sure, we've got Shell XL on, that's fine. 10 cycles, that's too many. We don't really need 10 cycles. Let's uh, go down to about four cycles here. So that looks fairly good. All the um, spheres are about the same size. The fluorines are bigger. That's because they are rotating and this is the purpose of this um, tutorial. So we're going to click on the ellipsoid button. That makes them anisotropic. The R factor is now close to 7%. That looks good. And we can already see the hydrogen, so let's add them geometrically to the structure. Just a quick check. Um, let's click on, need to scroll down a little bit on the electron density map. Uh, it's not the map I wanted, so I switch it off, head over to tools and maps. I had the settings differently at contour and plane, but what I really wanted was the wire. So these settings are taken in this sort of shortcut here. So we look at the wire and F2 to have a white background. So that looks fairly good. There's no clear wrong atom type assignment, but we've got this disorder and I think it's strongest in this group here, which the ellipsoids tell us and also the cupics tell us. So let's try and model that disorder here. Before we do this, the goodness of fit is 1.7. It's red, so we haven't switched the weighting scheme on. So we click this button here, refine. That should now get this down, and it does. Okay, how do we model this disorder? It's reasonably simple in, in, in Audix 2. So what you need to do, we, we need to generate alternative fluorine positions in these three positions where the Q peaks are. And one way we can do this is we select the group we are interested in and then from toolbox work, select the split function. So these atoms have now changed color and the mouse has become strange. And we right click on the axis around which we want to rotate. So we want to rotate this group around this axis. And we've done that. And we just grab that fluorine and we turn it over. So now we have the disorder all set up and we can refine this and refine it some more and refine it some more and the refinement works out really rather well. So let's go anisotropic on this. So we click on this again and that looks fairly good except of course the ellipsoids are rather smeared out. So there's a couple of restraints that we need to get this model to behave. The first one is a distance restraint. The easiest way to do this is to click on the carbon and type SADI. So this will put in a distance restraint from the carbon to the fluorine, but also the fluorine-fluorine distances within each group. And we refine this again. And we refine it some more. The R factor is looking quite good. But the ADPs are still not very good. So what we need to do is click on part zero and part one. So this shows us this part. And because this is um, selected, it's, it's, it's also selecting that part, which is quite helpful what we want. We select this whole grouping and type regu. 
that puts in the Rigo restraint. We do exactly the same for the second part. So we select those ones and put the Rigo restraint in. And if we refine this, the R factor will probably stay the same or go up a little bit, 0.1%. But I think that's a good price to pay for having these ellipsoids now physically uh, reasonable. Uh, we refine this some more and we have modeled this disorder in this place. I've not named these atoms in any specific way. So these atoms F3 are, are random names if I now just go through and rename them. Uh, for example, just to make it simple, we click on F1. So I can go on this and type name 1. And if I switch that on, so we've got F1, F2, F3. And if I click on part 1 and part 2, and I named them, I don't know, name 4, then what happens is all the restraints that we put on are just as valid as they were before, so we don't need to worry about the atom names or, or anything like that. Okay, so I think I've shown you how to model this sort of simple disorder by simply rotating that group. The file has all been set up for you. There's no more work to be done. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's all done. Let's just try the same trick again. So we select the group we're interested in. Uh, we click split, we right click on the bond that we want to rotate around if we manage to get it and then we just grab a fluorine and move it over with the mouse, hit escape, control R for refine and put the SADI restraint on, click on the middle SADI and refine and click on part one and part two. Uh, we've done these ones up here, so I didn't really want that, so we just click on here, 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 and put a Rigo on, and click on part two, and do the same, put a Rigo on, refine it, we haven't got anisotropic yet, so let's do that now, Rigo works for anisotropic and isotropic atoms, and here we go. So we've got the R factor down to 0.5.33%. Look at all the parts. I'm not anisotropic on that last one, so let's do that now. And I think this is a reasonable model of the disorder that we have observed here. Yeah, the geometry looks healthy, the ADPs look healthy, and in general, I think this is a valid model. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it one more time. Um, I'll do the same again. Select these, click on split, right click on the axis, grab the atom, left mouse, and let's put the SADI on straight away and refine it. Refine it once more and part 0 and part 1, we select them all now, so we select these atoms, put a Rigu on part 2, select, select, don't want them all selected, it's a bit of a trap actually, select them and put the Rigu on, refine, Anis and refine, 5.21, looking not bad on the structure. Anis, again, it only makes things anisotropically that are shown. It's a little, uh, yeah, it's, it's quite useful, but it also, of course, can cause a bit of frustration like it did just now. Okay, um, we find it some last time, and I think this is really it. I don't think I want to take this model any further. Um, thank you for using Olex2. Hang on, we are not finished. This is still wobbling. Refine some more. Make sure this settles to zero. It will eventually come down uh, one more time. One more time, we can increase the number of uh, cycles, of course. Could do this by refine 10, and I only want to see five peaks because we found everything that we're interested in. And the biggest peak is 0.8. I think we can live with that. Control R again. And here we go. It's nicely settled, and the disorder has been modeled. Okay. Thank you for using Olix2.